In this video, I'm going to show you how you can customize the asset preview window um, and how you can use that across multiple projects and share with other artists, other developers, so you have a consistent viewer. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at that now. So now that we're in our scene, all I'm going to do is actually go down to one of our static meshes. I'm just going to double click it and that is going to open up our actual asset window. So I'll go ahead and expand this out. Now by default, this is how yours will probably look. You've got your grid, you've kind of got this little floor and you've got this environment. Now by default, it's not bad, um, but you may find it's distracting. It may not be exactly what you want. So there's a way that we can actually change these settings. So what I'm gonna do here is if you go up to window, preview scene settings, it will pop open this little side. Now let's go ahead and just walk through real quick how we can change this. Um, and then also make a note when you can share this um, across uh, multiple uh, with, with other developers, particularly if you're using um, a source control system like Perforce, um, it will pop up and say, hey, check this out, go ahead. Uh, I'm not only gonna submit it and other people can access this. But for now, we're just gonna focus on changing it for uh, you. So what we can do is we can give this an actual profile name. So we could say this, um, I'm actually gonna call this neutral because personally that's what I change in mind because I wanna focus on the asset, not on the scene. So I'll go ahead and just do neutral. I can do shared profile. Again, if I had uh, source control, it would pop open a uh, little up here saying check out file, go ahead and add it. Um, and then other artists could use it. Now, one of the things you can do is you can set it by default, which is great. So you can set it for your project. Okay. So with lighting, we can use sky lighting. So this is actually going to use um, part of the skylight that's in there, which I can turn this off and you can see it's going to do some wonky things. Um, again, that may be what you want, may not what you want. You can always change the intensity, the color, the skylight intensity. You can rotate, um, which is kind of cool. So you can actually see it going in real time, uh, which is kind of fun. So rotation speed, you can set this, I believe it's degrees per second. So if I go like 25, you'll see that it goes kind of fast. Um, this is a great way you can actually kind of like uh, do just a, a turntable. I don't recommend it. There's other better ways to do this, but at least what you can see is how it interacts with the sky reflection. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off on rotate sky. Okay. So that's the, the lighting tab as it pertains to skylights. Now with the environment, this is typically what I will check off. I will turn off environment and I will turn off floor. Um, and again, this actually helps me to focus on the asset. Now what you'll notice by default though is actually it starts to get crazy blown out with these values. So turn off environment, show floor uh, does the exact same thing. Now you can change your environment color when you do turn off environment to something that's say darker if you like working in you know, kind of dark modes, if you wanna go white, whatever it is. Uh, one thing to do take note of if you ever change this color and you wanna get back to something that's neutral, this is in linear color space. So your value you want is 0 0.1819. That is going to be your 50% gray. Um, as it pertains to linear color space. Okay, I can go back to show environment. Um, and one of the things I can do here, you know, if you're working on a project where, you know, you find that there is a, an HDRI that, you know, either you've captured yourself from an actual scene or one that you're using consistently to, you know, stay standardized in your pipeline, you can actually load that environment cube map in here. So I'm gonna go down to maps, HDRI, and I'm gonna go ahead and load one actually from um, another video that I did where we showed how to capture our HDRI from uh, an actual scene. So there you go, you can see there's the asset. Probably turn floor back on so it's easier to see, but it's in its natural habitat to say. Um, so now you can actually see from the coloration here on the background. So if I turn off show environment, turn it on, well actually it's gonna still be applied because it's applying that, but you can see that I can actually get that lighting information, which is great. Okay, uh, the next thing that we have here is this post-processing enabled. So if we turn that off, I wanna say that this will set everything at zero, which may or may not be what you want because if you notice the scene is generally pretty dark. I do believe that there is a direct correlation. So if I go back down here and change it to the courtyard, yes. Okay, so I don't believe there's a way that we can actually control um, the environment with uh, the exposure, but just know that your HDRI, whatever its default lighting values are, that means to say its exposure where it's at, that's going to be projected. And you can see that on the side here. So if I take this in, this one being captured from our scene, I haven't done anything post-processing to bump up the brightness. Uh, that's where we're gonna be stuck at. In fact, actually I could open this real fast, do brightness of two. 
It'll take a second to recompute. Go back here. So we've got to save it. Um, yeah, so it's still going to take the values. So just be aware of uh, that's what's going to happen there when you just turn post processing off. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into the post processing settings. Now, if you are familiar with uh, post processing volumes or post processing on cinematic cameras, you're going to have some but not all of uh, some of the same effects that you have with that post processing, which is great. Uh, because this is an asset scene viewer, it has its own post processing built in. So, you know, for example, in our scene, we have this post processing volume here. It is absolutely zero effect in our scene preview. Okay, so with it, there's a couple things that you can check through here. I'm not gonna go through all of the settings, but the big things that I would recommend, um, if you've ever seen any of the other videos I've done on neutralizing your scene, Typically, again, being an artist myself, I like working in a neutral environment. I like to see just the asset kind of in its raw, untouched, no color correction, no overexposure, no underexposure. Um, so I'm going to share those settings real quick how to do that, which again, because we're naming ours a neutral. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the environment. So I've got my gray, again, if we double check here, R50%, which is 0.18 in linear space, gray. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go down to our exposure exposure compensation, I'm gonna set this to zero, and I'm gonna set my min and max brightness both to one. Okay, so there we go. So not super nice, but it does give me a chance to actually just see it uh, raw. Um, in fact, actually, if we set the exposure compensation to one, that will kind of blend things out. Um, now don't quote me on this, we're actually using 425 on this one. Um, I need to dig into this a little bit deeper, but typically your exposure compensation of zero is flat, so you're not actually compensating anything. Uh, but in this situation, in the asset viewer, it does look like you may want to set that to one, just so you can accommodate the darker areas. Okay, advanced, I don't think we need to do anything here because again, we are not ramping up or down. Uh, chromatic aberration should be turned off, dirt mask is off. Lens flare, uh, we can take this. Again, if you wanted to do this for some reason, we could absolutely blow out some of those, those lens flares. Um, but I think if you have it unchecked, it should be off by default. Um, not the value that's in there. Shouldn't need, you can turn the vignetting off, so you can see if I really crank that up. Um, that one I probably would turn off. Depth of field, you can keep that there. And then our color gradation, by default, everything should be flat. There shouldn't be anything that's changed here and you can go in and change it if you want to. However, because this is your asset viewer, I recommend not touching those settings, but you know, have at it, have fun, change what you want to, totally fine. Okay, and then I think the rest, we don't need to worry about our film. Um, with our rendering features, this is again, is where we can do a couple other different things. Um, this project is not running ray tracing currently right now. In fact, I believe we, yeah, we have it turned off. Um, but if you did have ray tracing turned on, you will actually have those same visual controls. So you'll be able to see the real time uh, reflections in your asset viewer. And there's a cost, uh, uh, you know, some other things you can go in here. Again, similar to your post processing volume where you can change as you preview those. Um, and then I believe that should be it. Um, again, I can do this add profile. So now I've got my neutral, so I can switch back. I can go to the other one, which is default, and I can do multiples of these. I can share those across to other, you know, um, other, other people on a project. Uh, they do transfer over, which is great. So that covers the preview scene settings and how you can change it. So hopefully that'll help you um, in your projects for being able to see your assets the way you want to without distraction or for any random wild crazy custom customization setups that you want to do. So that'll wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.